So schools are underway across the state of Idaho. Almost all of them are in some sort of in person in class participation of some form or another. Alternating schedules, online classes, both are pretty good ways to slow the spread of COVID-19. For elementary school through high school, that works pretty well. But what if your school has on campus housing? Keeping your distance a little tougher that way. And we all know testing is key to keeping the coronavirus contained. So how can you test and ma in mass and with expedience? Northwest Nazarene University says they have figured that out. They started school on August 31st, and since that time they have used the saliva direct testing protocol. It's a diagnostic test. It's a method that's created by Yale University researchers. It was given an emergency use use authorization by the FDA a month ago and NNU jumped all over it. And to be clear, their test though is not a diagnostic one, but kind of more like a screening and in using it, they say they can take samples from huge groups of people on a regular basis to see what the prevalence of COVID is on their campus. It, think of it the same way as like all the screening questions all of us have to have at work these days, where someone says, do you have a fever? And then the doctor takes that information and says, well, you have a fever and this. Now we're adding in this very sensitive, um, the sensitive methodology that can detect COVID virus in their saliva. Okay, how sensitive is it? It is possible, well, the, we can detect a sick person in a pool of 10. We've checked out that for the levels that you have in, um, in a person who's COVID positive, they have at least 10,000 particles um, in their saliva and all, all the methodology together, we can detect about, we could detect it if they even had 5,000. It's a saliva test, basically just a swab on the inside of your cheek and that's no, it? No, they, they, you drool into one of these little tubes. Okay. And then we put a barcode on it so that we don't, I don't know, my students don't know who it is that's registered with the campus doctor he knows. And then they take a, a sample out of 10 different tubes and pool it together, digest away the proteins that are in the saliva, and then um, take a sample of that into a real-time PCR piece of equipment. So basically you're able to see out of 10 people, somebody in that group has... COVID. Yes, that's, we, should, we should see if somebody, or more than one somebody, if we were really unlucky, has COVID. Now, after that, then we break up that, if there was somebody who was positive, we take pairs of tubes that we still kept aside, and we make a new, a new prep with only two people to narrow it down to which two codes it was. Okay, so this basically cuts down your process and the timing, because you're, you're testing one out of 10. If something shows up there, then you can kind of narrow it down. But if nobody shows up there, you guys are moving on. Absolutely, and it's cheap. It's cheap? far cheaper to do that. We could probably, I think we can test real cost for 50 cents per person per test. And so how often are you guys doing this? We are testing everyone on campus who wants to, ideally once a week. Um, and if they're in a high risk group like um, athletics or choirs and bands, we're testing them twice a week. I mean, what have you found with the results? It's really a very efficient process. We have two, we have three senior biology majors who have experience with real-time PCR and with microbiology and biohazards, and so they're running these tests. I think we're finding that the hardest part is actually figuring out how to collect saliva from so many people in so many different settings. But, you know, they all got their own little bag of tubes and their ID codes, and so that. It's getting there. After this is the second week we've tried for real to do everybody, and it's getting better. Saliva direct thing. I mean, it's only been a couple weeks that it's been approved. The fifteenth of August. And so you're kind of one of the the first large, I guess you would call them, somewhat large groups to kind of put this to the test, as it were. As, as the best I know, yes, that's true. And to try to do a whole campus, I don't know anybody who's trying to sample the whole campus every week um, this way. Yeah, I hope it could be a precedent. It's very doable. People could do this. If you have the equipment, it's relatively inexpensive. The technique is very um, sturdy and um, lots of places have the capacity. So I hope we can encourage other universities to start their own, um, start their own testing program. You seem pretty satisfied with, with kind of participation, how it's working and the results of these tests. Well, you know, I'm a biochemist, so I, I'm sort of always interested in, you know, we'll keep looking at, do we end up with false positives and false negatives? Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm actually, well, the, 
most of all, it was surprising how well it worked from the very beginning. This is a really clean test. I mean, it's tough to have things work from, from day one. Well, Dr. Chase said they have about 12 to 1300 students who are on campus on a regular basis and about 750 or so of those live in the dorms. Well, today they got about 500 samples turned in, so it's not mandatory. Not everybody does it, but they get a pretty good sampling and they should get those results from those 500 right about now, which is pretty quick. And if they get any positive results, those will be turned over to the campus doctor and he will decide how it plays out from there, which will likely mean a diagnostic test to confirm a positive result, likely a quarantine after that and possibly some medical attention. In the two weeks since they've started school, NNU has had five total confirmed COVID cases, which is less than five for every 1000 people. Boise State University, meanwhile, has had about 75 positive tests in the same two weeks which is more than five per 1000 people. And yes, more people means more possibilities of positive results. But here's the key. BSU has plans to test their residence hall residents just once with a nasal swab. They could do more if an outbreak occurs and their results will take about one to three days to get back. And then you will do their saliva test every week or more often and will have results in hours. And they are certainly not the biggest school in the state, but right now they are playing a big role in seeing how large groups can get together if testing is what it takes.